Hello everyone, I am Dr. Giriraj Sharma and today we are here to discuss ventilation physiology and different basic terminologies about ventilation. So in coming 15 minutes we will be discussing these points like oxygenation, about ventilation, what is VQ mismatch, what is oxygenation index OI, what is ADO2 and what is A ratio. SpO2, SaO2, PaO2 and PaO2. These different terminologies are there that often confuse us and difficult to understand ventilation without these terminologies. So, we will start from oxygenation. So, what is oxygenation? So, ventilation does two things. First is oxygenation and ventilation. Oxygenation means increasing oxygen in the arterial blood, ventilation means CO2 pressure. So first we will discuss about oxygenation. So oxygenation during ventilator depends on two things. First is FiO2, second is mean air pressure. Only two things that determines the oxygen. First is FiO2 that we can control directly fractional inhaled oxygen that we can control directly if there is decrease in oxygen we can increase the fire. Second is the mean airway pressure that determines the oxygenation. Mean airway pressure is depends on the PWEP, PIP, TI, ray and flow. So in last lecture we have already discussed the factors determining mean air pressure and how to calculate mean air pressure. So if we want to increase the oxygenation, we have to increase the mean air pressure. That can be can increase either by increasing the PWP, increasing the PIP, increasing the iodine, rate or flow. Flow also increases the mean air pressure. So if mean air pressure increases, oxygenation also will improve. How to calculate mean air pressure? By this that we have discussed, the formula we already discussed in last lecture. This was about the conventional ventilation, but in HFO, HFO in, we can directly control the mean airway pressure. In HFO there is no peak or PIP, there is directly we can control the mean airway pressure. So if any baby is in a high frequency ventilation, if you want to increase the oxygen snow of the baby, so we have to directly increase the mean airway pressure. We do not have to increase the PIP or PPR because directly we can control the mean. And second is the FIO. This is about high frequency ventilation. Now, second point is ventilation. So, ventilation means wash out of CO2. So, ventilation depends on the minute volume. And minute volume in conventional ventilation is equal to tidal volume into rate. Means minute volume depends on the tidal volume and rate. If you want to increase the ventilation, if you want to increase the CO2 washout, then either we have to increase the tidal volume or we have to increase the rate. By increasing these two, we can increase the net volume and we can increase the ventilation. Second is the IE ratio. Ventilation depends on the IE ratio also. Generally, we keep around 1 is to 2, but if CO2 is high, if you want to increase CO2 washout, then we can increase this IE ratio 1 to 2.5 or even 1 to 3 also sometimes we can increase so that baby will get more time to exhale more time to exhale so that CO2 will wash out so this is about conventional ventilation in ventilator then coming to HFO in HFO ventilation depends on two things first is the frequency or rate Second is the power delta P or amplitude. We can call power also we call delta P or amplitude. Okay. So these two things directly control the ventilation. So here opposite happens. In what I mean conventional ventilation, if you want to increase the CO2 washout, then we have to increase the rate. But if we are here we have to reduce the frequency. There is opposite. So that we will discuss in HFO class the why it happens. Second is that if you want to 
increase CO2 as well. Means if you want to decrease the CO2 level, then we have to increase the delta P or amplitude. Okay. Directly you can increase the delta P to push out the CO2. So this is in HFO about ventilation. Now coming to VQ mismatch. VQ mismatch means ventilation perfusion mismatch. So this is the alveoli and this is the pulmonary capillary. Here gas exchange happens between the alveoli and pulmonary capillary. So this is the ventilation, this is the perfusion. So if ventilation also is adequate, perfusion also is adequate, that is the there is no VQ mismatch, ventilation and perfusion is matching and there is proper gas exchange is happening between them. Okay. So here ventilation and perfusion is equal, there is no Q mismatch. So it is one. Okay. So up now if alveoli is collapsed, if alveoli is collapsed, here if alveoli is collapsed, but perfusion is there. So means here ventilation is not there, but perfusion is there. So means their mismatch is there. There is no ventilation but perfusion is there. Means ventilation perfusion mismatch is there. So here V Q ventilation is less but perfusion is there. So V Q will be less than one. So here V Q mismatch is there. There will not be good ex gas exchange here because here ventilation is not there. So this will there will be shunting. We will discuss now shunting what that is. This is shunting. Then third question comes here. Alveolus is open, but perfusion is not there. Maybe because of increased pulmonary vascular resistance, this pulmonary capillary the berries are constricted, and there is no perfusion here. But ventilation is there. But here there will not be any gas exchange because here there is no perfusion. So what will happen here? This will be dead space because here there will be no gas exchange. So V U will be more than one. Ventilation is there, perfusion is not there, so VQ will be more than one. So this is ventilation perfusion mismatch. Now what is the shunting? Shunting here what happens that here there is no gas exchange, so here deoxygenated blood will come and deoxygenated blood will go here. Means in um, Systemic circulation it will go deoxygenated blood only. So here we call intrapulmonary shunting. This is shunting is happening, but this shunting is happening in alveolar level. So this shunting we call intrapulmonary shunting. When shunting happens at the cardiac level, at the level of the PFO and PDA, that we call extrapulmonary shunting or cardiac shunting. But here this shunting is happening because deoxygenated blood is only going, there is no oxygenation happening. So this is called the intrapulmonary shunting. So in this we have discussed about the vacuum smash and the different types of the shunting. Next point is oxygenation index for OI. So what is OI? OI indicates the hypoxemic respiratory failure. This OI we use generally in cases of the PPHN or hypoxemic respiratory failure to determine the severity of the disease. So OI we can calculate by mean airway pressure into FiO2 upon PAO. This is the formula of OI. Okay. So mean airway pressure ventilator will show directly on the screen sometimes or we can calculate also we have discussed already. FiO2 we know already how much FiO2 we are doing. PAO2 we can take from the AVG. So after this we can calculate the OI. So OI if it is more than 15 means there is hypoxemic respiratory failure is there and sometimes in more than 15 maybe it can meet HFO if it is more more than 20 so this is the indication of the INO if it is more than 40 that is the indication of the PICMO okay. so this tells the severity of disease means OI increasing means severity of disease increasing so this uh, besides the management also more than 50 where we can need HFO more than 20 INO and more than 20 is ECMO this is the hypoxemic respiratory failure